Hi, this is Greg from the Rio Grande Jewelry Tech Team. And in front of me, I've got some metal master models, some silicone molding rubber, some aluminum frames and plates. And I'm going to take all this and show you the process of packing and cutting so that you end up with some high volume production molds. And if you're coming from the older organic rubber technology and you want to switch to the new silicone rubbers, I've got a really important tip that's going to help you become successful at that. Or if you're just starting out packing molds, this is going to be great information for you too. So stay tuned and let's get started. Before we get into packing and cutting, let's take a moment to inspect our master models. I can see that this model has been molded before in organic rubber. It has a dark brownish color all over which gives me the perfect opportunity to talk about how to switch your mold making over to silicone rubber. Organic rubber uses sulfur as an accelerator to cure the rubber. And of course, sulfur causes tarnish and oxidation. Silicone rubbers will be contaminated by sulfur and will not cure where they come in contact with it. Let me show you an easy way to get rid of it. Just run a low flame over the model and you can see the sulfur burning off. It will create a greenish flame. Then polish and clean. Since silicone rubbers don't have this residue, you won't have to do this again. Now back to the inspection. You want to make sure that there aren't any dings or scratches. If they are, they will be reproduced with every casting. One little trick I like to do is I like to take a fine Sharpie and I like to start marking the model where I want the parting line to be. So that way, once you start cutting, you just follow the line. And we'll see how this works out later on when we start cutting. Another helpful idea is to make a sketch of the model or take photos. Because once it's buried in a block of rubber, you may not remember what it looked like at all. And it will be really important if someone else will be cutting the mold. Make sure that you're using the correct temperature to vulcanize your molds. You can find that information here on the sheet or on our product page on the website. So before we start packing our mold, I'm going to start prepping this rubber sheet. Today we're going to be using this Nietzsche red silicone rubber and I'm going to show you how I do it. You can use a, a ruler and, and measure it out, but I'm going to show you how I do it with this frame. I lay it out like this, mark it. I'm just going to move over, use a common line, and just continue across like this, and just go all the way across. Like that. So the ideal placement for this master in this mold frame is in the center, left to right, and center, top to bottom. Okay, so let's start packing the mold. I'm going to start out rounding the corners here. Some of these corners are square. I'm going to set the bottom piece in first. You notice it doesn't come all the way to the edge. There's some little air gap, but this silicone rubber is very pliable and easy to press and move so I can press it out. You don't want any air gaps, so you want to press it up tight. I'll take the second piece, lay it on. I'll round these corners a little bit. I'll lay that in. I'm going to lay it in in such a way where I try not to trap any air bubbles going down like this. Okay, so now I've got two pieces in there, which is more than halfway. And we talked about the master being halfway. So what I'm going to do, since this rubber is so soft and malleable, I'm going to take the master and the sprue former. I'm going to put that in. That should go along the bottom edge. And I'm going to... Make sure it's centered left to right. And then what I'm just going to do is press it in. And it's so soft, you can press it in. I'll just press it down. You could also just put pieces in and just pack it as you go, but this stuff is easy enough to just pack like this. Okay, you can see it's about halfway in. All right. 
And then I'll put the last sheet on the top. Doing it the same way. Start on one end, kind of roll it down. Try not to, try. I'm going to push it down in there, try not to trap any air. Now this sheet is definitely going to stick above the frame, and I'll show you how I deal with that. So let me get this pressed down. If you have a little rolling pin, you could roll across and press it down that way. So now, to get it even with the top of the mold frame, I'm just going to take this scraper and go across like this. Like that. Just try to blend it in a little bit, that's fine. And then I'm going to use a marker because I'm just going to call it uh, end cap. Because when you're marking this mold, it's best to mark it before you cure, uh, vulcanize it, because that way the mark will, the, what you mark on there will be permanent. If you try to mark it afterwards, um, it'll, it'll wipe right off. Here you can see. I mean, it just wipes right off. But if you put it in at this point, it'll burn it in. And you'll see that when we take it out. So now uh, we're ready to pack it. And I'm going to use a drop of soap on here. And then all we have to do is put it on. That'll be a release agent to help the plate come loose. And on the bottom, we still have our plastic, which will help us while we're packing it so it wouldn't get stick to the plate. And now I'm just going to do the same thing, put a little bit of soap. This will be a good mold release. Put it on. And now we're ready to take this and put it in our preheated vulcanizer. So let's go. So now we're going to place the mold into our preheated vulcanizer. And then I'm just going to spin the handle down till it stops a little bit and then just a little bit more. And that's all you got to do. Those of you that come from the organic molding process are going to be really surprised at that because you don't have to really crank it. You don't have to come back and re-crank it after it heats up. That's it. And the reason why is because as silicone heats up, it creates its own pressure. Whereas organic rubber, you have to apply a lot of external pressure. But that's all we got to do. So now we just set a timer and come back and take it out. Okay, so after it comes out of the vulcanizer and it's cooled down, you're going to have a little bit of this flashing sometimes. And I find that I just take a pair of scissors and just trim that off so it doesn't get in your way when you're cutting. And you just go around and trim it like this. And then the other side, this side doesn't have quite as much as the first side, but still a little bit in the way. And it's a little bit there, and that's about it. We're now ready to begin cutting our mold. Let's look at what tools we'll need. The only tools that are absolutely necessary are a very sharp knife and something to hold the rubber in place as it's being pulled back. Some people like to use this style of church key can opener, uh, vice grips, and clamps of all kinds. Scalpels are the preferred type of cutting knife because they're extremely sharp. Sharp blades make cleaner cuts 
which makes tighter interlocking mold halves. I have also found that using magnification is very important, so I really need my Optivisor. Whatever you choose is more of a personal preference rather than a question of right or wrong. Whatever gives you a usable wax removed without distortion and minimal cleanup is the ultimate measure of a successful mold. Okay, so now we're ready to begin cutting. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to start out by cutting an eighth inch to a quarter inch deep border all the way around this mold. Go around like this. And then I'm going to go back here and go down the middle like that. So now we're ready. So another Another reason for cutting that border is it helps give you a, a starting point. Uh, so when you hook onto the clamp here, you've got at least something to get started on. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start grabbing it, this corner, and I'm gonna follow down the sprue where we made that mark, and then I'm gonna make this wavy zigzag. And now that I cut this border, I can see where the mold halfway point is. So I'm going to flip it around, do the same thing on this side. Start going down. Cut the zigzag. Just keep going down more and more, following the sprue and the black mark that we did. Flip it around. You kind of want to cut evenly, so that's why you're always flipping back and forth. Now you can start to see a little bit more, right? Cut a little bit more. It starts getting easier. You want to follow that sprue right down the middle, and I'm going to cut this flip it over. Now you can see the black mark on the sprue that we made with the Sharpie. See it? Starting to get to this to the piece, to the little end caps. There, you can see them, and you can see that black mark, right? Flip it one more time. Now I think I could probably even pull it out. Let's see. Yeah. So here's your model, and you can see there's those black marks. Now I'm going to hook it on this clamp. Which will allow me to pull it a little bit better. And I don't know if you can really see those black marks in there now. You should be able to. Just follow the line. It's pretty easy. Flip it around. Once you get past the piece, it's a little bit easier.
And here, just at the end, I can just go straight there. And here we have our mold. There you go, ready to inject. So venting is an important part of mold making. When the mold is closed and clamped and ready to inject, there's air inside. That air has to go somewhere. So we have to create some vents. And the way to think about it is this. So as your wax goes in, there's air trapped in here. It's going to start pushing back against the wax unless it's vented out. The vent doesn't have to be very big. It just has to be big enough for air to go out and not wax. So as I look at this, I can tell that the places to be vented are here and here. And so you want to cut little vents. They can be zigzag like this. And you want to put a little bit of powder in the vents just to hold them open. So we just want to hold it open for a little bit of air to go out and not the wax. So now you're ready to start injecting. But remember, when you're starting out, you're probably going to make some mistakes, but that's okay. Failures are going to be your best teachers. I hope you found this information helpful, and if you're interested in any of the products in this video, check out the links below. And as usual, if you have any questions, contact us.